And there is yet more. We also have a man who I think is, well, I think there's no doubt, he's one of the planet's greatest ever singer, songwriters and performers. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Neil Diamond. <laughs> Neil Diamond! Hello, Neil, how are you? Yeah. It's Neil Diamond right there. For tonight. Isn't that exciting? Hey, Neil. Yes. Nice tonight. to meet you. How are you, Neil? OK. For tonight, I want to be an Osmond. <laughs> this is one of my dreams. I'm smile, here. Neil. Smile, What? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, you see, you picture. don't fit in, because they, they, they look, the Osmonds look, you can see the Osmonds, there's a close-knit family group there, and, you know, they're, they're a sweet nature. You, you always, I always think, Neil, it always looks to me like you've killed at least one man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> me? <laughs> that's, well, that's what I like about yeah, you. You've got that, that, there's a darkness there. That, that couldn't be further from the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to hear it, but you can't help the way you look, and you look like a murderer. <laughs> but a sexy, talented murderer, and that's why we love you. There you go. That's fantastic. Neil Diamond on the show, ladies and gentlemen. OK, now, I think you've guessed what I'm going to say next, because, of course, we have the Osmonds here in the studio, we have Neil Diamond in the studio. That means tonight we're going to have some great live music from Ray Winston, ladies and gentlemen. That's... Uh... <laughs> it's my chance. I'm here. <laughs> I'm so excited. Here we have uh, music from the great Neil Diamond, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you, Neil. I'm so looking forward to it. OK, that's the show. Before we get to that, uh, let me just share this with you, because... Shall we get my final guest out, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Can't wait to meet him. First, let's see him in all his dazzling rhinestone glory. Hands Touching hands Reaching out Touching me Touching Mr. Neil Diamond, ladies and gentlemen. Diamonds are forever. Diamonds are forever. Forever. And ever. Thank you. Okay, playing them all. Come and sit down, Mr. Neil Diamond, Thank ladies and gentlemen. Wow, it's a thrill to meet you, sir. Thrill Thank to you meet so you. much. Well, I'm so pleased to be here. Thank well, you for having me. Great to have you in the UK. Um, I was actually with the Osmonds backstage, and I wanted a picture. I wanted a photograph. And there was a photographer back there, and I asked if I could be in the midst of the Osmonds because everybody in their heart of hearts wants to be an Osmond. <laughs> It's, it. it's one of my theories, because these people radiate. These, they give off such good vibes. That's their teeth, I think. It's... <laughs> Very naughty. <laughs> uh, hey, we need to congratulate Neil Diamond, ladies and gentlemen, because his uh, latest album, uh, which is called Home Before Dark, fabulous album. I've had it for a while. I had a copy early. Uh, I think it's your 29th album, is that correct? Something like that. First one to go straight in at number one in the United States of America. Yeah. What a fantastic achievement. <laughs> what a fantastic achievement. And that must be a hell of a feeling, isn't it? It is... Uh, uh, I'm speechless. Uh, I, there are no words that I can describe it w with. But, hey, congratulations. I mean, because, you know, we, we think it comes easy to people, especially when they've been in the business for a while and they've written, you know, so many tremendous songs we talk about. But I suspect it doesn't get any easier. I suspect, if anything, it probably gets harder, doesn't it, to, to put yourself out there and come up with new stuff? Well, maybe it does. Maybe it does. I, I, I know I worked hard on this album. I wanted it to make a point. Uh, I wanted to show that I still had some fuel in the tank. And, uh... uh I'm, I'm very pleased with the album. Uh, did you write all the tracks on this album, or most of them? I think yes, all of them. I did. Now, when you were, yeah, we're talking about a career that spans some considerable period of time in, in modern show business history. Yes. When you started out, you were born, is it Brooklyn you were born in New York City? Brooklyn, New York. Uh, Jewish parents? They, they are Jewish. Okay. How did they feel about you going to the music business? Because most Jewish families, have met, even today, they want their son to be a lawyer, be a doctor, get a profession, an optician maybe, you know, not be a troubadour. Um, my parents were encouraging, 
from the get-go. I remember when I was a little boy and I was at my grandfather's house and I had a bar of soap and I was carving the soap. Somehow it was a popular thing of the day or from school and I was carving a thing into the soap and my grandfather was complaining that I was wasting the soap and my mother said, he may turn out to be a great sculptor someday. <laughs> so they were encouraging for whichever path I chose and, and they were in, completely behind me with the music as well. The first songs that I, I really was aware of that came for you were the, were the hits that the monkeys had with your material. Because I, I've always been a big fan of the monkeys. I've always loved the monkeys, their sound. I've always loved the songs they did. And I'm a believer was such a tremendous hit for them. One of your songs, of course. Yes. Uh, now, did you write it with them in mind or did they just hear it? And... No, it was to be released on one of my albums. And the man who was in charge of the monkeys and created the monkeys, a man named Don Kirshner, heard a record that I had out at the time called Cherry Cherry, which was a very big hit and first international kind of hit for me. And he said, I want that guy to write some things for the monkeys. I couldn't, I was on the road, I had finished my album. So my producer sent over my album and said, this is coming out in two months. You want some for the monkeys? Take whichever ones you want. And he picked a bunch of them. <laughs> and uh, the monkeys recorded them and they were huge hits and because they had I'm a believer and a little bit me a little bit you that was bit, one of yours as well wasn't it that's right and a couple of others they just wholesale went through whatever was on my album and and the head of my label at that time went nuts yeah because you know these should be your hits. and they could have been you hits know. for you yeah but uh, I was a songwriter at heart still then and when a popular group wants to record your songs you don't turn them down, you say thank you. Mm. And uh, I had a new baby at the time and that was important. I, I, you know, it was, a, it was a, a big step for me. Do you uh, perform those songs now when you play live? Do you do I'm a Believer? Uh, we do I'm a Believer and, and, and we love doing it. I mean, it's been around forever. Well, I can imagine it with your voice it's sounding like one of your songs. Of course, the way they produced it changed it. It sounded like one of theirs, but of That's course right. it's... Yeah, it's different, but... Uh, Everybody's got a different take on these songs, but I was so pleased that they recorded it. And at that time, you had to have one hit after another. If you missed not having a hit with a record, you were out. Yeah. They, it was like starting again. And fortunately, at the time that I'm a Believer came out, I had a record out, which I think was my third single, which did not do well at all but it was covered up by the fact that the, the monkeys had this huge hit and people took it as mine, so I got another chance. Yeah. And uh, so I have to give them credit for helping my career maintain its momentum. We, we saw a clip at the beginning and that was quite an extraordinary outfit you were wearing there. That is scary. Really, you look like you're ready for the oven right there. That's <laughs> <laughs> Two, two hours at 240 should do him nicely, madam. Um, whose decision was it to dress you that way? Was this something you wanted to do on stage, or was it... I mean, and it's not dissimilar to the Elvis look, to the Osmonds look, uh, which... That was a... Obviously, That's jumpsuits right. were in. Uh, Donnie was just saying before, it looks like one of the Osmond uh, outfits. Yeah. My designer at the time, a young fellow named Bill Whitten and I, got together and said, let's have some fun. I had taken a sabbatical for a number of years, uh, and I came back and I wanted to just have fun with the costumes that I was wearing. So he made up some of the most, you know, that red one was, you know, it, it was representative of what I was wearing then. It was a red jumpsuit and it, you know, it was blinding and the belt, I don't think you yeah. could see it, but it was, and I still have it. Well, that, uh, <laughs> do, you, do you ever wear it? Do you ever put it on? I could not nearly get into it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's nothing of you. You had to be a toothpick to get into that uh, stuff. But those outfits now, in, in, on the one hand, I see it would take a certain amount of confidence to put that on and walk on stage. On the other hand, I suspect that it probably helps you to go out there in front of all those people when you're dressed like that. I don't know if it helped. It was, it was a costume. It was fun. It was rock and roll. It was, it was just supposed to be fun. Yeah. You know? And uh, we, we did every possible variety of shiny beads, glass beads, hand-woven, uh, sequins, uh, anything that glittered. Uh, partly, from Billy's point of view, it was because nobody else was doing it. So he came and said, this is, I found a new he fabric. He said, nobody's doing this. 
this is something that you can do and stand out and not be part of the crowd. Mm -hmm. So we went with that theory, and, and I realized nobody was doing it because it was horrible. <laughs> you know, it, was, it, it became kind of a trademark. But uh, I guess you kind of get trapped in it. People expect it, and they want to see you in it. Well, people began to criticize me, and the critics, you know, made a point of the shirt, which got me upset. But um, I, I didn't really take it to heart. As a matter of fact, I had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder at that time because the critics weren't on my side and they hated the shirts, boom, give me another dozen. And they were even more outrageous each time we went yeah. back for a batch. And uh, up until maybe 10 years ago, I really pulled out all stops. And then they started to quiet down a little bit. What's your, what's your stage wear now? What are you going stage in with now wearing? You know, interesting, I have not seen my stage wear. I have a new designer and she's told me that I'm gonna look great and, and, and I'm I, hoping some gold lime, eh? Uh, I'm, I'm feeling some know. tinsel. I'm, I'm really scared about it because I have not seen a single a costume or a drawing. Usually you see it. That's very brave of you. So you're just gonna go out and wear what you're given? I'm gonna wear it in the dressing room. And if I can't stand it, I'm gonna put a pair of jeans and a t-shirt on and go out and do the show. But would, would it be, if it was a very flamboyant thing, would that be too much for you now? You wouldn't want to wear that now anymore? No, I don't think it's going to be flamboyant. I think it's going to be appropriate for my age. Uh, I think it'll be quieter, a little more dignified. Uh, still, hopefully, we'll have some fun in it because that's really what yeah. rock and roll is about. You want it to be, have at least one bit of reflective material involved, but it, but it I can, think be, so. can be a darker colour, maybe. Uh, I, I'll be interested to see. I honestly have no idea what maybe I'll be wearing. Something black and shiny, something like that. Maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe. Uh, okay, now, you know early on I accused you of being a murderer, and I apologise for that, um, <laughs> because nothing's been proven, I know that. Um, <laughs> I think what was going on in my head was, I was aware, I don't know if you've seen this, the, the, the television show in the say Saturday Night Live, there was the, the brilliantly uh, talented Will Ferrell, Yes. took to doing a kind of odd impersonation of you, didn't he? Yes. Did you know he was going to do that? Did he just start on you? Uh, how did you find out that he was doing this thing? Uh, I, I just caught it on the run occasionally. I really didn't understand it. <laughs> I was flattered by the fact that somebody was, yeah. was uh, impersonating me. And then I found the premise was basically that I was so straight and so square that behind the scenes, I was really an axe murderer and, you know, a pornographer and all of that kind of stuff. And that was the joke. And I thought, that's a funny premise. Yeah. But um, I didn't get it so much while it was happening. I'd, I'd see him do a little bit and, and uh, I'd kind of move on. Okay, because you went on to join him. You did a sketch with him at the end, didn't you? In his last show, I, I came on and did a cameo with him. Uh, just as a kind of a tribute to him. And okay, let's have a look. We don't have that, but we do have a little bit. This is Will Fell doing Neil Diamond uh, as only he can. Have a look at this. I said, cool, let's do it. But Gary over here was a little shy. Uh, come on, Neil, give me a break, man. <laughs> <laughs> this first song. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That, of course, Sweet Caroline. I wrote that song after a big show at the Forum. Gary and I had been drinking pretty heavily and we were driving. Oh, I can't believe you're gonna tell this story. <laughs> yeah, well, we were driving down this dark road and I hit a kid. So we got out and sure enough, he was dead. So we just took off pretty fast. And two hours later, I wrote Sweet Caroline. Sweet. Not at all. No, no. That song was written out of pure necessity. I, I was in Memphis. I, I, I needed another song to record. In those days, you had a three-hour recording session. You needed three songs to sing. I only had two. The night before the session, I wrote Sweet Caroline and recorded it the next day. So you wrote a song uh, the night before out of necessity that people are still singing today. It's amazing. It's, it's so unpredictable. It's one of the exciting things about it. And no children were killed in the making of that record. <laughs> not, not one. Not one. Uh, uh, 
Neil, what a thrill it's been to meet you. You're going to be touring. I know you're doing some big uh, dates over here. We're doing some big dates. I'm here. looking forward to seeing, not just to see you performing live, but also to find out what you're going to be wearing on stage. Me too. <laughs> yeah, the two of us. It's going to be a no great idea. surprise. And you're going to perform for us this evening as well. I'd love to. I would love to perform. Well, I was under the impression you were going to, so hopefully this, uh, <laughs> Well, I, we I'm rehearsed. Hoping this isn't, I'm hoping this isn't new to you. You have rehearsed. We have okay. rehearsed. Okay. So uh, we're going to hear him live in a minute, but first of all, join me in saying thank you to Mr. Neil Diamond, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> thank you so much, Neil. That was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fabulous. So, Neil, you're going to go and get ready. Okay. Neil Diamond will be performing this week. Thank you, Neil. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my thanks to all my guests tonight, Neil Diamond, the Fools, and Ray Winston and the fantastic Osmonds. All of them great guests. Uh, and you can see Neil live later this year. You can see the Osmonds live. And you can check out Ray at the pictures. Next week, my guest will be movie star Mark Wahlberg will be here. Uh, we have the new queen of crime uh, and, of course, Desert Island Disc, host Kirsty Young and tireless Nancy Hunter's John Bowerman and Lord Andrew Lloyd Webber will be here. Plus, we'll have music from the Black Kids, who are just a fabulous new band. But now, performing his new single, Pretty Amazing Grace, it is the one and only Neil Diamond! <laughs> Pretty amazing grace is what you showed me Pretty amazing grace is who you are I was an empty vessel You filled me up inside And with amazing grace restored my pride Pretty amazing grace is how you saved me And with amazing grace Reclaim my heart Love in the midst of chaos Calm in the heat of war Showed with amazing grace What love was for You forgave my insensitivity And my contempt of them Beside a wretch like me, your pretty amazing grace was all I needed. Stumbled inside the doorway of your chapel, humbled and awed by everything I found. Love surround me, freed me from what I feared. Ask for amazing grace, and you would be. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, fellas. Thank you, ladies. Oh, 
Love on the Rats. <laughs> Ain't no surprise. Pour me a drink. I'll tell you some lies. I got nothing to lose. So I'll just sing the blues for a while. Yesterday's gone But now all I want Is a smile Most they say they want you Oh, they really need you And uh, suddenly you find you're out there Walking in a storm We all know the song You need what you need You say what you want Not much you can do When the feeling is gone Maybe blue skies above But it's cold When your love's on the rocks They say they want you Oh, they really need you And uh, suddenly you find you're out there Walking in a storm And they know they have you And they really have you But nothing you can do or say you Got to leave, just get away We all know the song Tell you some lies. Your stay is gone. And now all I want is a smile. Fabulous band, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Neil. That was tremendous. What a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you so much, everybody. How about that? See you soon.